Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and I wanted to show you a brand new feature that everyone has been asking for, and we're so happy to have it inside of Grayscale Gorilla Plus. It's called User HDRIs, and it allows you to use any HDRI on your hard drive right within the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. So let's head on into Cinema 4D, and let me show you how to set it up. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D, and obviously we have a ton of included HDRIs here in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. If it's studios, we got indoor, outdoor, we got a ton of stuff here to help you create a beautiful render. But we also know that you have some HDRIs on your hard drive, whether they're custom, ones that you've shot, or just some that you found online that you want to add to the Plus library so that you can use it right within HDRI Link and our other HDRI workflows. Well, that's why we created the User HDRI tab right Right here for that exact reason. And I wanted to show you how to set it up. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is upgrade to the latest version of the Plus Library. You can just go up to the Grayscale Gorilla Hub here in the Grayscale Gorilla menu. You're gonna see a new version of the Plus Library. Go ahead and install that. And once you have that installed, restart Cinema 4D and open up your Plus Library. Now I have it docked here right inside my interface, but if you don't do that, just go up to the menu and open up the Plus Library right here. And uh, I recommend docking it just so you can get to everything a lot easier. Once you install the new library, you're gonna see this new tab called User HDRIs. Now yours is probably empty because you haven't told the plugin where your HDRIs are on your hard drive that you want to use inside of the Plus library. So to do that, come on up to the edit menu, click on preferences. Once you're in preferences, you're gonna see Grayscale Gorilla over here on your left. Go ahead and click the plus and then under that, you're gonna see the plus library preferences. Here's where you're gonna add any folders you want to use HDRIs or EXRs right within the plus library. You could add one or many, and then you're gonna to have to do one more restart of Cinema 4D. Once you restart, everything's gonna start caching inside of this user HDRI tab. So you could just navigate to it, and you're gonna to start to see all of the uh, EXRs and HDRs in those folders start to pop up ready to use inside of the plus library and with HDRI link and all across uh, Grayscale Gorilla products. Now we do have full tutorials to show you how to set up HDRI link, whether you use Octane, Arnold or Redshift. Today I'm using Octane and you can see it's already hooked up into our Octane Sky. And of course, HDRI link allows me to now just click on any one of these HDRIs and it will instantly switch between them. In fact, here's a few custom ones I made while on vacation. This one's in the beer fridge, and this one's next to the Grand Canyon. I even have some studio HDRIs that I set up with really simple soft boxes here. And if we scroll down, you're gonna find some new favorites of mine from Adobe. They have these great little studios here. In fact, I've been using this one a ton, and this one's really nice as well. And in fact, as you click through, you're gonna see it instantly updates right here within HDRI link, and this is exactly why we wanted to bring user HDRIs so that you can click on your favorite HDRIs and they just show up right in the scene, ready to use, ready to rotate around and create whatever look you're going for. In fact, let's load up one more scene file to show you how quickly you can dial in a specific look using any HDR included in Grayscale Gorilla Plus or any HDR included on your hard drive. So we have a little bit more of a motion graphic scene here. We have this little blobby thing moving around. We got some signal animations. So let's dial in some different looks real quick here. Let's find a nice kind of pause frame here with this thing halfway animated. All right, so this stood out right away as kind of an onstage uh, look, got a lot of bling going on, but a little too bright for my taste. So let's click around here. We have this nighttime one, and this is a completely different vibe. <laughs> We're out in the field. We got some like street lights going on, very heavy shadows. In fact, we could rotate this around and try to find a little bit better angle. Flat on is always not great, but these little starlight blings are kind of nice. A little too dark though. Uh, let's try out Studio Garden. This one's nice. It has a nice little backdrop if we swing the camera around. We have this nice dappled background. It might be a little bright. Let's darken it. We have these nice little dappled trees and nice shadows, but I don't think it's quite vibing exactly. Let's try one of these. This one's always been a nice one to go to. Let's rotate it around and see if we could find a better backdrop for this scene. Something more like that. There we go. Okay, so let's use this as our background. Looks a little bit dark, so let's crank it up and maybe a little bit more, 1.6. Thing with HDRIs, uh, especially if you find random ones all over, they have different uh, brightnesses, so make sure you mess with the power, and of course, rotate them around to get exactly the look you're going for. I love this look right here, and uh, with a few more little tweaks, I think this thing is ready to go.
Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget the Grayscale Gorilla library and every plugin and asset that we make is inside of Grayscale Gorilla Plus waiting to help you make better renders in less time. So if you're not a member, check down below for a link and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.